Hi, this is Kaylee, and let's talk about fluid flowing through a pipe, and specifically a horizontal pipe that just narrows as it goes through. So since it's horizontal, the middle of the pipe stays at the same height. It just tapers down as it goes through. And so at one end, we're going to call section one. It has a radius of five centimeters. Now we got to change that to meters here in just a second. Uh, flow speed of three meters per second. And a pressure of 1.5 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Times 10 to the fifth pascals. And then it tapers down to a radius of 3.5 centimeters in the second section. And we don't know the flow speed and we don't know the pressure. But that's what we're going to figure out in this problem. So we've got a density of 1.25 kilograms meters cubed. Now in physics we like to use kilograms meters cubed instead of what they use in chemistry, which is grams per cubic centimeter. Because we like things big, and so our numbers look large, but this is probably just salt water at that density. And we use rho for density. And we are going to first figure out the flow rate. Well, the flow rate is the volume of liquid that flows through this pipe every second. So to figure out flow rate, what we need to do is take area times velocity. Well, this is a circle, and we're going to take the cross-sectional area, which means we're going to cut it straight across. And so that 5 centimeters becomes 0 0.05 meters, as far as the radius is concerned. And the area of a circle is pi r squared times our velocity. So pi, the radius is 0 0.05 squared, and the velocity was 3. So this is a good plug and chug type problem. Now I'm going to use 3.14 for pi. So 3.14 times 0 0.05 squared times 3 gives me a flow rate of 0 0.02, let's call it 4. I'm going to go ahead, well, let's call it 3.5 or 3.6 meters cubed per second. And so that's our flow rate. That's how much fluid flows through this pipe every second. Now, whether it tapers down or not, that's got to be the flow rate because that stays constant throughout the entire system. Now that we've done that, let's figure out what happens when the pipe narrows. So when the pipe narrows, if you think about uh, Bernoulli's equation, Bernoulli's principle. So as we close things off, a couple of things happens. The fluid flows faster and the pressure should drop in that part. So just think about water coming out of a hose. It kind of pours out when you put your thumb over the end, it sprays out faster. But it's the same volume of fluid, it's just traveling faster because it's got to get that same volume through a tighter, narrower space. And so to figure that out, we need the continuity equation. AV in one section has to equal the area and velocity in the second section. Well, we already know the first section. We figured it out right there. It's 0 0.0236. But now we need for the other section. So it's still area, so it's still pi r squared, but now it's for the second section, and we got to figure out the velocity in the second section as well. And so 0 0.0236 equals pi, I'm still going to use 3.14, but now the radius has shrunk down to 0 0.035 meters, and that's got to be squared. And then we're going to find the velocity. So 0 0.0 236 divided by 
divide by 0 0.035 squared equals a velocity of 6.1, let's call it 4 meters per second. So that's the velocity of the water coming out of this smaller end of the pipe. Well, to finish things off, we need to know we've got the flow speed, we got the flow rate of the system, we got to figure out the pressure. So for that one, we need to use Pascal's principle. Pascal's principle is this. The pressure at one side, let's say, plus rho gh at that side, the height of that side, plus one half rho. Rho is the density of the fluid through that section squared equals the pressure in the new section plus rho gh of the new section plus one half rho v squared of that new section. So I'm going to first do what I can algebraically, which is not much in this case. As we look through, the only thing we can really get rid of are these heights. Since it stays at the same height, the pipe just narrows, that term and that term can cancel out because the heights do not change. That's the same number on both sides. But that's really the only thing we can do. The rest has to come down to our math. So the pressure in the first section is 1.25 times 10 to the fifth pascals plus one half the density. We can't cancel out the density because it's not in these other terms. So we have to leave it in. So that's 1,025. And the velocity in that first section was 3 and that squared. In the second section, we're looking for the pressure. We know the velocity in the new section because we've got it down here. So it's 1,025 times 6.14 squared. And now we just throw that into our handy calculator. So let's get this first side over here. So 3 squared, 9 times 1,025 divided by 2 is that plus 1.25 times 10 to the fifth gives me a pressure of this side or the total of this side to be 12961.2.5 equals P2 and then let's add up this or calculate this side which is 6.14 squared times 1,025 divided by 2 is 19321.0, let's call it 5. I know I'm rounding off, but that's not going to hurt that much. So I want to move that to the other side. We're going to subtract that from both sides. So we're going to do 12961.2.5 minus 19321.05. And we get a pressure of 1.1 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to the fifth pascals for that smaller section. Okay, so it makes sense. The fluid's traveling faster, so the pressure exerted on the environment around it should be less. And we did find it to be less than what we originally started off with, with that one. Okay. Thank you for watching. Tune in again for some more physics, and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.